Father Martin, welcome back to the program. Good morning, Art, and how are you? Uh, I am very well. Uh, better than the news. Um, I want to tackle right away, Father, a couple of yes. breaking uh, kind of news stories. One, uh, I started getting messages yes. that a an exorcist, one that you may know, was very brutally murdered in America. What what do you know about that, Father? Yes, the one man we're both thinking of, uh, his name was Alfred Kunz, and he was a parish priest in Dane, which is a parish in Ohio, uh, in in uh, in Milwaukee, in in um, in uh, pardon me, in Wisconsin. Wisconsin, all right. In Wisconsin, and um, he was found uh, at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, with his throat cut from ear to ear. His throat cut? Yeah, from ear to ear, in his own blood, face down into it, and with obviously various acts of desecration of his body, uh, which are normally associated with uh, Satanist-inflicted death. Uh, Father Kunz, of course, um, and by the way, he was a very popular parish priest with his people, uh, he had done exorcisms, but very, very private. Most of us don't talk about them because they usually involve confessional material. And uh, uh, Father Kunz was a very good priest and never spoke about confessional material. Had he been in communication with you? Yes, we had been in communication. Uh, do you know offhand if he was doing anything at the time? I'm, I'm sure the police are probably asking about this, but I mean, it's an obvious question. They, they are, and they they, they uh, are refusing to give any of the more lurid details of the mode of his death for the simple reason that they don't want to... They suspect it's somebody within his vicinity, not a stranger. Um, and there are only, I think, a couple of hundred people. Well, no, about 700 or 800 people involved. Uh, there certainly is not a random act of violence somebody who wanted to steal or was caught in the act of stealing and simply flailed out. Uh, they're convinced it wasn't a random act like that, that was a deliberately set up thing, uh, and that at least one person was involved in it, uh, perhaps more. Uh, Kunz himself had just been doing radio shows with a priest friend, whom we all know very much, Father Fiore, and um, they returned home late at night, uh, late being about 10 o'clock in the evening, um, and uh, we know that he was alive at 10.30 um, because he made a telephone call or received a telephone call, I forget which. But then the following morning at 7 o'clock, a young man who came to assist him at Mass, etc., uh, found him lying, as I said, in his own blood with this uh, very, very sinister uh, mode of death etched on his body. Um, there's no doubt about it that it is related, uh, whether it's related to his very confidential activity as a priest uh, in regard to covens of warlocks uh, in neighboring areas, we may never know. We may never know. Uh, we may never know because, number one, the police have a habit in this country uh, that whenever there's, and it's a good habit on the whole, whenever there is any real Satanist activity of a shocking kind, they don't publish the details that indicate the Satanist connection. Uh, they just, uh, they, they publish the, 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 the bare details of a murder. Why do you think that, Father? Well, uh, it's also you're asking me why I think it's a good idea in general, because it doesn't evoke the, the copycat syndrome. Mm -hmm. uh, these things do, because uh, about 300 years, 200 years ago, they stopped doing exorcisms in public precisely because uh, it evoked the copycat syndrome in people, uh, imitators. Well, you have told me many times, since you have done so many exorcisms, that mm. there is real, very serious, very real danger. Is it not possible? I, I, it's got to be possible that yes. that in his work, um, in some way, in the middle of some exorcism, or as part of one an ongoing one, or, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? Um, I have no doubt about uh, the answer to your question, I, I foresee. 
uh, and interpret is no doubt about it. The, the death was not random. Uh, it was not an act of personal vengeance, somebody who got annoyed at him for some particular thing. It was in connection with his work as a priest and uh, in the area of demonic possession. Father, have you ever uh, been concerned at that level? Um, have you ever, w without being specific, because I know you can't about specific exorcisms, mm -hmm. but have you ever have you ever been concerned for yourself in yes. in very s same way? Very, very same way. But you learn after a certain time to take that added risk, and you take precautions. But yes, surely, and at times the 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 menace or the threat is uh, more patent, more obvious than at other times, uh, sure. Uh, and sometimes it's quite voluble, it's quite uh, expressive. You're warned. And more than one good priest in that part of the world, uh, especially one or two very prominent ones, got telephone calls from pointing out that they will they will go the same way. Oh? Uh, yes, and one of them actually had to hire a bodyguard, or was given a bodyguard by the police because of his prominence. Well, you've been a very prominent exorcist. Have you received threats? Oh, yes, in the past, yes. Not recently, but in the past, yes, very much. Not as part of this, this or a connected... No, not part of this, because I wasn't in any way related to this. And as one, one person told me, sort of... Uh, uh, happily, uh, because we don't belong to an umbrella organization, exorcists, in other words, those engaged in this area, because we don't belong to an umbrella organization, they can't identify every one of us and therefore pick us off. Uh, but they do, they, we are picked off, all right, there's no doubt about that. Um, and they're not the first, the, uh, uh, Father Kunz is not the first priest uh, who's picked off as a priest and as somebody who blocked or interfered with or spoiled uh, Luciferian plans. There's no doubt about that. Well, the fact that he is now dead would tell me that Luciferian plans are somehow still underway in, in whatever case. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Uh, is evil in America, evil in the world, increasing? Well, the only way I can ask that question without sort of sensationalism art is as follows that since 1972 or 3, when the group I am associated with started, as a very quiet, discreet group, but since then, incidences and types of demonic assault have increased. First of all, the increase has been about 750% since that time. 750%? About 750, judging by figures. And this is in the northeast corner of America, the tri-state area essentially, although it takes in outlying areas too. But then the types of possession, we have now the two phenomena that are very interesting. We have the phenomenon of the 20-something or 30-something that comes and says, look, Father, I want such and such a job, or I want to get this particular woman. Uh, I want to make this marriage. Yes. I want this money. And I made, I, I made a pact with, uh, with uh, Satan, with the devil, and I got it. Now he won't let go of me. Uh, this didn't occur before in my experience, that, in the limited experience I had. And secondly, then, there's the... This is how recent, this phenomenon, how recent? Uh, the last 10 years. The last 10 years. The last 10 years. And then uh, there is also the secondary, the second one, second form, which is a bit off-putting, to put it, put it mildly, mm -hmm. that we now find the age is younger. We find uh, children those that we would technically call children, six years old, who are obviously not merely obsessed, but on their way to full possession. Uh, there was a recent case uh, in Arkansas that I'm sure you heard of, uh, in which a couple of young fellows uh, decided they were going to uh, kill their classmates and teachers and pulled a fire alarm. Yes. Yeah and um, brought uh, rifles and lots of ammunition and simply started shooting students Wildly. and teachers. That's right. Just started shooting. 
That's right. I wish I knew the details of that case, but again, the police are singing mum, as they say. They're saying nothing about the details, and there's a great protectiveness web wove around those uh, young, you know... Uh, of course, yes, uh, juveniles, yes. Uh, juveniles. Um, but we don't know the details of it at all. Uh, An awful lot of that going on, if that uh, cooperates what you were saying. There is. There is, and there's much more than is is reported in public by the media. Uh, and in some, in several states, there's an agreement, uh, sort of an unwritten agreement between the police uh, and the governor. Um, there's an unwritten agreement that no details will ever be published without formal permission uh, by the media or by the police of any obviously. Satanist or Luciferian happening.